We're particularly concerned about patients who experience multiple relapses because we, we believe that with each relapse, the illness may not respond as well to treatment as it did the last time. It's possible that the illness could become what we refer to as treatment resistant, meaning the medications are no longer working the way we expect, and that that treatment resistance might be at least partially a result of multiple relapses. So I think there are many things that happen when patients relapse. They lose some of the gains that they've made in terms of social and vocational functioning, uh, perhaps their social relationships, their, their job suffers, they may have to take time off from work or to leave school. So all of these things are very disruptive in the person's life. But in addition to that, there may be biological things that happen each time someone experiences a psychotic episode, there may be changes in the underlying illness or changes even in, in brain physiology or, or brain morphology. So we're, we're concerned about all of those things. Uh, and as a result, we, we're very uh, eager to try to prevent relapse or at least reduce the risk of relapse. One of the concerns that we have is once we get somebody back on treatment, we're not sure that we can reverse some of the damage that's been done. Uh, we don't know. It's a very difficult thing to study, but it adds to our concern in terms of preventing relapse from happening in the first place. We're concerned about the prevention of relapse for, for really for many reasons. First, we start with the individual and what impact it has on his or her illness course and their potential for uh, recovery, which is ultimately what we want to achieve. We want people to be leading as normal lives as possible. And we know that if they have frequent relapses, it's really going to interfere with that. We also know it places tremendous burden on the family or on significant others uh, or on friends. In addition, it puts tremendous burden on, on society in terms of, of the expense associated with repeated relapse, hospitalization costs, People also who have psychotic relapses can sometimes uh, be involved in the criminal justice system. So they, they may be arrested for something or they may um, be, be a victim of, of some crime themselves. And these are all associated costs. In addition, we have the lost, um, the lost opportunity cost in terms of work or school. So if someone you know, can't participate in those activities, there's, there's, there's a cost associated with that. But the biggest cost is probably hospitalization because that, that can be quite expensive. And if we can reduce the risk of relapse and hospitalization, that, that could provide a lot of savings, which hopefully could be used to provide other services like housing and, and rehabilitation and things like that.